This fall, we have not one, but two new Xbox consoles. We've taken a look at the Xbox Series X in an extensive video review, but here we have the Xbox Series S. It's smaller, less powerful, more laid-back cousin. As you can see, the Xbox Series S is pretty small, not just by next-gen console standards, but by console standards, period. This is one of the smallest consoles we've ever reviewed, uh, coming in at somewhere around two-thirds the size of the Xbox Series X and much, much smaller than the PS5. It's a rectangular white box. It can be displayed in either a horizontal or vertical conformation. As you can see on the front, we've got a USB-A port, we've got a pairing button, we've got a power button. It is really that simple. On the back, there are a couple of more ports. We have two USB-A ports, we have an HDMI port, we have a power port, we have an Ethernet port. It's all the ports you need, and no more ports than that, unfortunately. Like the Xbox Series X, there is no USB-C port on the Series S, which makes it a little less future-proof than it could be, but for the moment, it should work with pretty much every accessory that you have. If the Xbox Series S has a familiar interface, that is by design. This is basically just the same interface as the Xbox One. It's the same thing you'd find on the Series X as well, and it's not that dissimilar from the Xbox apps on the PC and the Android platforms as well. It's not super pretty, but it is intuitive and it gets the job done. Now, if there's one thing you're not really gonna get with the Xbox Series S that you would get with the Xbox Series X, it is pure performance. This is not a 4K 60 frames per second console. This is a quad HD console that maxes out at 1440p. As a matter of fact, you're probably gonna end up using it with 1080p TVs, although it can upscale to 4K if you don't wanna take that jump quite yet, but might invest in a 4K TV in the future. It has about half as much storage space as the Xbox Series X, and the graphics card is not quite as powerful, but the processor is actually the same. So you should be able to get some pretty smooth performance on this. Like the Xbox Series X, Microsoft has optimized a number of games from the Xbox One for it, including Gears 5, Maneater, and a lot of other fun ones that are coming out this fall. Also like the Xbox Series X, one of the big selling points for the Series S is that you can replay all your old games. If you own downloadable copies of games for the Xbox One, Xbox 360, or even some games on the original Xbox, you can load them up right here. The only thing to keep in mind here is that if you bought discs for your Xbox and Xbox 360 games back in the day, they won't work here. There is no disc port. So you'll either have to get an Xbox Series X or be prepared to buy some of those old games again. The library itself is pretty impeccable though, especially when you consider you can play every Xbox One game on this system unless it relied on Kinect connectivity. Let's talk a little bit about the controller as well. Now, if I just handed this to you, you might not even know it's a different controller from the Xbox One controller until you got to the back. These are textured grips, and even though they're subtle, they do make a difference. This controller has textured grips, it has an improved D-pad, and it has a little share button dead center of the faceplate. Aside from that, there's really nothing new here. The controller is in fact so similar that it even maintains an unfortunate design decision from the Xbox One controller, the decision to use two AA batteries rather than a rechargeable battery pack. This is pretty old school at this point, it feels a little wasteful, and while you will be able to buy battery packs, it's one additional expense that Microsoft really didn't have to pass on to the consumer. It is a good thing that the Xbox Series S has so many games you can play via backwards compatibility, because at the moment, there aren't really any exclusives available for it. You'll be able to get new games that are coming out this fall, like Assassin's Creed Valhalla and Yakuza Like a Dragon, but these games are also available on other platforms, from the Xbox One to the PS4 to the PC. If you're looking for games that won't come out on any console except for the Xbox Series S or Xbox Series X, there's nothing like that yet. So if you have an Xbox One console, you can hang on for a little while at least. For the moment though, you're just gonna be playing prettier versions of games you have either already played or can play shortly on other systems. How much you like the Xbox Series S is ultimately going to come down to what kind of console you expect it to be. If you want it to be a cheaper version of the Series X, it is that to some extent, but it's not going to give you the same kind of power and performance. However, if you want an entry-level console and never picked up an Xbox One, something for a guest room, something for kids, something because you're a more casual gamer, it's actually a very, very pretty console that runs very well. It's not incredibly expensive, and it fits just about anywhere. If you get the Xbox Series S, know what you're getting into. But if you go with the right expectations, the right attitude, and the right kind of entertainment center configuration, 
I think that this one could be a pleasant surprise. For Tom's Guide, this is Marshall Onorov, signing out. Happy gaming.